Hi, this is Guyanus. Uh, I'd like to summarize the highlights of our recent MRM paper, where we focused on test-retest reproducibility of single voxel MRS at 3T and 7T. Um, we focused on test-retest reproducibility uh, because that is an important factor that determines the clinical applicability of the method. Namely, uh, only those disease or medication-related changes uh, will be detectable in individuals that are higher than experimental and physiological day-to-day -day, uh, variability. So our goals in this work uh, were, first of all, to establish test retest reproducibility with state-of-the-art acquisition uh, methodology and hardware at both magnetic fields, and then to um, compare test retest reproducibility at 7 Tesla versus 3 Tesla. Um, uh, a number of studies have shown that lower Kramer row, lower bounds are obtained at 7T versus uh, 3T, but we asked the question if those uh, in fact translate to lower test retest coefficients of uh, variance, and if so, for which metabolites. A summary of our uh, methods so we uh, scanned six healthy volunteers four times, these were weekly scans, at both 3 Tesla and 7 Tesla. Uh, the RF coils that we used were those, uh, the, the best ones available to us at both fields, so they were not identical. At the 3T we used the standard setup with body coil excite and 32 channel phased array receive, whereas at 7 Tesla we used a 16 channel trans uh, transceiver array. Uh, B0, B0 shimming was the same on both fields. Um, first and second order shimming was done using fast map. For localization sequence, we used a, a short echo semi, semi laser that was described in this 2011 MRM paper, and I will go over the reasons why we chose that sequence. We uh, focused on two regions of interest, posterior cingulate and cerebellar vermis. Uh, the first one is affected uh, in uh, a number of dementia disorders, so it's clinically very relevant. Uh, the second one is affected in a number of movement disorders um, and uh, relevant from that perspective. They also represent two regions of interest uh, with uh, different challenges for uh, spectroscopy due to location, due to intrinsic line widths, uh, etc. Quantitation was done uh, using LC model with water referencing. And uh, for the reproducibility metric, we used coefficients of variance, uh, which is standard deviation divided by the mean. First, we determined these uh, per subject basis, and then we took the means to determine the um, group averages for test retest reproducibility. So a few uh, words on our choice for the localization sequence, which is non-standard. Um, so first of all, um, the sequence minimi uh, minimizes chemical shift displacement errors, and this is really the main reason to use this over, for example, the standard press sequence at 3 Tesla. It also uh, reduces apparent T2 relaxation and J-coupling evolution. Here I'm uh, showing an, an example of uh, chemical shift displacement errors with this in-house developed uh, semi-laser sequence versus the standard press sequence as it is available in our case on the Siemens platform. It can be substantial. Here um, the displacement is shown for two resonances that are 3 ppm apart at um, 3 Tesla. So these are the two ends of the spectrum that can be localized uh, differently in space. In addition, um, the sequence was optimized for various factors. Um, for example, it generates, under most circumstances, artifact-free single shots so that we do not have to rely on phase cycling uh, for unwanted coherence removal. It uses um, the vapor water suppression method that's, that was described by Tkacheta in 1999. MRM, so it has high water suppression efficiency, 
and we routinely do single shot frequency phase correction as has been standard in a number of research labs for various sequences. And um, when, uh, when we use uh, a, a pulse sequence that is optimized uh, in these different aspects, we can get highly reproducible um, spectroscopic results um, as shown here. So here we are showing our data from one individual um, for both regions of interest at, uh, at the two uh, magnetic fields. And each panel shows spectra overlaid, the four spectra overlaid that were obtained from this individual. As you can see, uh, there is very little difference from session to session and there is great um, reproducibility. So um, this slide shows a comparison of kramer lower bounds um, and uh, test-retest uh, coefficients of variance. First of all, the metabolites that are displayed here are those that had mean kramer lower bounds of 20% or less. So if you look through the kramer lower bounds at 3 Tesla versus 7 Tesla, in most cases uh, it is clear that um, the seven te at 7 Tesla we were able to obtain lower kramer lower bounds and the stars show the statistically significant differences. And this was expected, this was shown by a number of uh, other studies previously. Now surprisingly, when we looked at the test retest CVs for the same metabolites, we did not see a corresponding improvement, except for um, a few metabolites, as shown here, for example, in the cerebellum, <coughs> glutamate, glutathione, and glutamine were, uh, in fact, uh, quantified with better test retest series, which uh, was statistically not significant, but the trends were clear. So we could uh, conclude from this that lower Kramer Rao lower bounds do not always translate to lower test retest series. Another point to highlight on the slide is that um, five metabolites, namely total NAA, total creatine, total choline, minostol, and glutamate, were quantified with uh, test retest CVs of 5% or less at both fields. So we wanted to investigate uh, this lack of improvement in test retest CV at 7 Tesla versus 3 Tesla a little bit further, and we wondered if we reached a threshold of reproducibility at the um, spectral quality levels that we had. So we decided to do the same analysis with subspectra to investigate um, what the situation would be at lower and lower SNR levels. So we summed um, two scans, four scans, H16 um, or 32 at a time and uh, looked at the between session uh, test retest CVs for those subspectra. And, and sure enough, a difference between 3 Tesla and 7 Tesla in this case was apparent. If you look at the test retest CVs at uh, 3 Tesla, they keep improving as the SNR increases, whereas at 7 Tesla, in some cases, the um, a, a low threshold of reproducibility has been reached already at 2, 4, or 8 scans. This is relatively clear here for NAA, creatine, minostol. For example, creatine in the posterior cingulate does not improve after 8 shots. Um, so we can conclude that test retest CV limits were reached with shorter acquisitions at 7 Tesla, at lower SNR. So to summarize, um, um, we can say that spectral quality, namely optimized data acquisition methods and streamlined analysis protocols are critical for test retest reproducibility. High spectral quality with excellent test retest reproducibility can be obtained on standard 3 Tesla equipment using an optimized acquisition protocol. In our case, uh, we use a protocol that combines semi-laser with fast map shimming. 
And finally, um, we demonstrated advantages of the 7 Tesla for, in particular, uh, weakly represented metabolites, short acquisitions, and small volume of, volumes of interest. Thank you.